All right, let's start this again. Yeah, some low notes, some low notes. And let's put some tension. There's some tension. More tension. More tension, less tension. More air is coming out, slower air is coming out. Now no vibration, because it's too wide of an aperture there. Now we'll close the aperture a little bit. Tension. More tension, less tension. No tone, too wide of an aperture. A little bit of a tone, a lower. Add tension. Less tension, less tension, less tension, all the way down to no tone. The number one reason you can't play high on any brass instrument, trumpet, trombone, French horn, baritone, euphonium, tuba, cornet, flugelhorn. If you play one of those instruments and you are having trouble going upstairs into the upper register, there are quite a number of reasons why you might be having trouble, but there's a number one reason. There really is number one, a number one reason. And I can say this because I've demonstrated um, a lot of the other reasons here on my channel. Um, various sizes of mouthpieces, great professional horns, Horns that are crappy and should be made into a lamp. Lower level student instruments. All these kinds of different things will add into whether or not you can climb upstairs on any brass instrument. Your own physiology. Breathing and air. So, but let's get into the number one reason why you are having trouble trying to go upstairs. And the number one reason, drum roll, is muscle strength, lip strength, contraction, and tension. And I just demonstrated that in the balloon trick that you saw there. What did you see in the balloon trick? Well, let's go back and watch it one more time. All right, let's start this again. Yeah, some low notes, some low notes. And let's put some tension. There's some tension. More tension. More tension, less tension. More air is coming out, slower air is coming out. Now no vibration, because it's too wide of an aperture there. Now we'll close the aperture a little bit. More tension, less tension, no tone, too wide of an aperture, a little bit of a tone, a little lower, add tension, less tension, less tension, less tension, all the way down to no tone. When I had the balloon and I adjusted, manipulated the opening, which is the aperture of the balloon, and I made it more taut and added more tension and contraction and made a smaller aperture, you noticed that the pitch rose. When I relaxed things here, the pitch went down, regardless of the air. I mean, you saw the balloon was full of air and it got all the way down to almost no air. I was kind of pushing on it, but still, 
uh, when there was a reduced amount of space for the air to come out, you heard that the pitch went up. When this got all relaxed and a lot looser, you heard the pitch go down. This is the number one reason you can't play high on your trumpet or any brass instrument, or maybe you can play a little bit high, but you're having some struggles. And probably a part two of this is that you're hearing erroneous advice from people that you probably trust. Band director, private teacher, famous brass players, all the way up to people that have had their nose in the book and got their DMA and their university professors. And then specialty celebrity famous trumpet players that can actually play very, very high. You're, you're hearing some erroneous advice and you're being misinformed. Um, these people have good intentions, but let's go through what you've been told. A lot of times you've been told just work on your long tone, your long tones or pedal tones, work on your flexibility stuff and make sure you are really breathing with an open throat. Don't close off the throat. Oh, your mouth is open. Your teeth are open. Your jaw. Oh, oh a lot of warm, slow air coming out. Well, that could be good when you're playing in the staff and below the staff. I totally agree. That setup of warm, slow air in this big correct breath and your throat open and everything open is really going to jinx you when you have to go above the upper register. And so let's go back to the number one reason and the, the premise for this whole video. I boiled it down. In fact, I went through a lot of my videos. I don't think I had one video that just targeted this number one reason. So this can make it clear. Tension, lack of tension, strength, lack of strength, contraction, or a lack of contraction. So for example, my arm is not contracted. See, I'm gonna show off my muscles here. I haven't worked out in a while, but still, it's, it's pretty loose, look, not contracted. That's not contracted. Now if I contract it, uh-oh. I got some pipes, baby. I got some pipes, that's contracted and hard. That is the contraction I'm talking about here. If your lips are not well conditioned and not well strengthened, you won't be able to get the contraction you need to be able to play with power, accuracy, but more importantly, to be able to go upstairs. And why is that? Let's go back to the balloon. The balloon, you may not have been able to see it. And of course, the balloon is not a perfect example of what, exactly what's going on with our lips, but it's pretty close. When you saw me stretch it, um, I'm not wanting you to stretch your lips out, but what, what, what was happening was when I was stretching it, I was reducing the aperture of the air coming out of the balloon. By stretching it, I was actually forcing more tension from the top part of the balloon to beat the bottom part. So there was more tension coming in, reducing the aperture, and you heard the pitch go higher. You have to have this ability here to be able to add the tension, keep a narrow aperture, and that comes from the muscle contraction like you saw in my arm. Well, that contraction has to happen in your top lip and your bottom lip. If you don't have the strength to make that contraction happen, you're just gonna have troubles and you're not gonna be able to get into the upper register. That's why you see me doing crazy stuff if you checked up my, my channel. I'll pick up, in fact, I have the mouthpiece, mouthpiece right here. I got the world's largest Bach trumpet mouthpiece. It's the Bach One. See if I can get out of the way. And um, it's not necessarily important that you see the number on there. I'll turn it around just to see if it's gonna come up. But just trust me, this is the world's largest Bach trumpet mouthpiece. It's the Bach One, not 1A. Not 1B, not 1C. Uh, this is a bit, you can go swimming in this guy. It's very, very large. So, yet I'm still able to get some higher notes on it that most people can't get on their shallow mouthpiece. So, so why is that? It's not that I'm special, but I'm employing a certain contraction from the top lip and the bottom lip. You can do it too. 
you don't have to be um, over 30 like I am. You don't have to be over 90 like Doc Severinsen is. And you don't have to be some famous uh, prodigy that's 18 years old. Uh, over in the Ukraine, for example. I mean, you yourself can do this, whether you're 12 years old and you've only been playing for a year or two, or whether you're a comeback player or you're an old timer or anything in between, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, pro, or a um, superstar trumpet player, you can employ this pedagogy of upper register that I'm talking about today. And so, how are you gonna do that? You have to strengthen the lips and that's where a lot of people seem to have the problem. So they're hearing, let's go back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video. You're hearing advice from people that you trust. How many, how many of you people are 13 or 14 and you trust your band director, raise your hand. All of you raised your hand because you trust your band director. He or she knows a lot more than you do and that's true. And so when they tell you to do this or when they tell you to do that, um, you're probably going to listen to them. Um, how many of you have a private trumpet, trombone, tuba, or whatever teacher? Yeah, you do? Okay, so you trust them. They're telling you how to do this and you're going to do it. But is it working? It probably is not working for uh, what we're talking about in this video today. Upper register, high range, high notes, expanding way upstairs above the staff. It may or may not be working. And then you get on YouTube and you watch very famous trumpet players and trombone players, French horn, baritone, euphonium, tuba players, cornet players, flugel players, everybody. These are famous people. Typically they're older, but they're telling you this and that about how, how to play higher. And well, maybe you could, maybe they're telling you something that's good and maybe not. For example, anybody that's telling you just to completely relax, completely relax and you're gonna be able to play higher is number one, very, very misinformed or number two, a prodigy or a natural talent. There's one person I'm thinking in particular uh, that had some very famous um, interactions with a celebrity trumpet player back in the 70s and his whole thing is um, uh, no tension at all. And you have to set the mouthpiece a certain way. And if you do, you're gonna get this amazing upper register. That just simply is not true. For that particular person, it is true. Let me give you another example. Maynard Ferguson. Are you aware that Maynard Ferguson was playing professional lead trumpet in a big band when he was 14 years of age. Let that sink in. Let it sink in. Here's a kid that's 14 years of age, eighth or ninth grade, and at night his parents are taking him to play lead trumpet with a pro big band in downtown Montreal. I mean, think about that. That same trumpet player later when he got older talked about air. In fact, he lived in India for three years and got into yoga breathing and all this. He talked about air being the main reason and that everything here should be relaxed. And that uh, when you go to play hard, you lean back and you bend your knees. No, sorry, Maynard. Uh, that's not going to work. It didn't work for Maynard's son, Bentley, either. And Maynard's son, Bentley, eventually took this guy, threw it away, and I guess he started you know, boom, 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 boom. He started playing uh, bass. So it didn't work for Maynard's own son, Bentley. Um, and I don't know about his daughters if they tried to play any brass instruments, but uh, we already know that it didn't work for them because do you hear about any of them um, playing like Maynard on any brass instrument? No. And there's no evidence that, that they can do that. So it worked for Maynard. And you have to think, why did it work for Maynard? Because Maynard was a natural talent. He still remains the best trumpet player of all time. No one has beaten him all around. He's just the natural, he could have, if he only done classical, we would be talking about him being so much better than Winton, uh, maybe a little bit better than Maurice, Andre, 
Um, he would kill Alan Mazzuti. Anybody that you can think of that's good, Maynard would have absolutely annihilated them if he had chose only classical. He chose commercial and jazz, and so that's how we think of him. But um, as a pure trumpet player, he is unbeaten. And you have to think about this. When he was 14, how many years did he practice? Hello? How many years did he practice high range stuff? Long tones, lip slurs, going high. I mean, how many years could he have practiced to gain the acumen that he did? Not many years. He's 14. What did he start practicing? He started messing around when he was, what, eight or nine? And, uh, I mean, come on, think about it. He didn't, ha he didn't have many years to go from zero to 100. That's a natural talent and happened to be the best trumpet player of all time right there. That's why he was playing lead trumpet at 14 years of age and probably outdoing people like myself now at my level. I mean, he, this, guy, this guy is amazing. You can't listen to his advice because he is a one-of-a-kind type of individual. So whose advice are you going to listen to? Well, you're watching this video, you're going to listen to my advice because I've been around the block, you know, I'm not 19 years you know, I'm not a kid that's just messing around in college. You know, I've been around the block. This ain't my first rodeo. And I've focused on brass pedagogy with a, a micro focus on trumpet and upper register. And I've done that for years. And I've, I've looked at a lot of different people. And then I've experimented on myself, also students way back when. And I pretty much know what I'm talking about. You have to have the tension of upper and lower lip to create a narrow aperture so it will withstand all the pressurized air coming out and it will maintain that the narrowness of the hole there to allow the air to be sped up and so you can play higher. Everything else is going to help you out. So working on your air, yes, that's going to help you. Working on your tone, of course, that's going to help you. Working on flow studies, that's going to help you. Being in good physical condition, that's going to help you. Getting the world's best trumpet. Maybe if you're rich, spend $30,000 on a Monet trumpet. That's going to help you. Um, maybe you're going to spend $500 on a custom mouthpiece. That's going to help you. Get with the world's greatest private teachers and celebrity trumpet teachers. Yes, or trombone or whatever instrument that you play that's a brass instrument. That's going to help you. Go to Juilliard, right? Go to Berkeley School of Music, go to Eastman, go to the best schools in the world and that's going to help you. But what all those won't do, they are not a substitute and they will not take the place of developing the muscle contraction in your embouchure and your lips and able to contain a narrow aperture for the air to be sped up fast. The fast air, don't let anybody fool around with uh, messing with your head that um, a like too much air allows you to play higher and doesn't help you to um, allows you to play louder or allows you to play higher or they say um, fast air has nothing to do with playing higher that's just uh, physically and scientifically not correct faster air and you can substitute another medium what if you substituted water fast water can be almost extremely violent, like in a pressure washer. If you get um, a high-powered, heavy-duty pressure washer from Home Depot, I mean, they tell you to be careful, wear gloves, because the water comes so fast, it can inject you with water and get um, air and water bubbles into your bloodstream and probably could, you know, kill you. So, um, and if you've used a pressure washer before, you've seen the power that it has to strip off rust and paint and everything else. That water and the air, we can go back and forth. The pressurized water is coming out with such a force because the aperture of the nozzle for the pressure washer is maintained. It's not being widened because of lack of strength. And that's because we're talking about an inanimate object. That's why you have such a focus and the water is coming out such, so with such a fast focus it's able to be quite devastating on whatever you use that pressure water, uh, pressure water on. The same thing with air. Let's go back to air. If you are able to contain the aperture, just like the nozzle on a pressure washer, you are able to contain fast air. Don't let anybody talk about 
saying more air is going to help you in the upper register. More air will not help you. I've demonstrated that you can play high without any air. Let me do it one more time. Um, let me point my horn away from, I got my Neumann TLM-103 and it's very sensitive and I got to point it the other direction um, because I had the gain cranked up. But let me go this way. Hopefully it won't, um, it won't clip on us. But I'm going to let all my air out and I'm going to play higher than probably you can play. So this is going to prove the point that all this extra more air, this, this yoga air and all this uh, filling up is, is bogus. It's someone that's misinformed or someone that's a natural talent that really is not able to tell you how they are able to play so great themselves. It's the tension and the strength and the contraction of your embouchure and your top and bottom lip, maintaining a very small, narrow hole where the air is going to be coming out. That is how you can play higher. And that's the number one reason you're not able to climb upstairs on any brass instrument from tuba all the way up to trumpet to piccolo trumpet to e-flat cornet it is the number one reason there is no other reason that trumps this as to why you can't play there are other reasons but this is the number one reason now let me exhaust all my air and i'm gonna let you watch this i'm gonna re i'm gonna make it uncut which means there might be some bobbling and some spias and some you know it's not gonna be perfect but i'm just gonna show you Okay, I'm going to take a big breath, I'm going to let the air out, and then I'm going to play. You'll see that I'm not taking any air in. That was a high C with no air. Let me try it again. I probably can go higher. It might not be the best sound, but it proved a point. This is the worst you could possibly play for any brass instrument with no air, uh, no air. Yet you have, this has to be turning on the light bulb in your head and you have to be thinking how in the hell could he exhaust all his air and get the high C and then get the double C, how? When my teacher tells me to, Suck all the air out of the room. Keep your throat open. Your chin, your jaw drop down low. Oh. And use a big, big mouthpiece. And you're going to be able to play high. They're just regurgitating maybe what their teacher told them, maybe what their DMA doctorate told them, maybe what um, they have heard before or they are a natural talent that can play amazingly and they really don't know why and they're just pulling stuff out of the air of what they've heard that probably they think might be true it's not so go back rewind this and watch me play a double c with no air no air but just the air that's trapped naturally in my mouth Right now you know the number one reason you can't play high on your instrument trumpet trombone french horn baritone euphonium tuba e flat cornet piccolo trumpet flugel alto horn whatever brass instrument that you play on if you are having trouble trying to go upstairs you now know the number one reason think back to my arm arm see soft squishy squishy right squishy squishy now i contract it Boom, hard, hard, contracted. Contract your embouchure, contract the lips towards the center and down with tension. Keep this pin prick of a hole, keep that narrowed and unflinching. And the air that comes out compressed and fast will allow you to skyrocket on any brass instrument. I hope you found this video of value. I've been trying to distill a lot of the stuff that I've told you over the years, and I believe that this is the most salient and poignant advice and 
I really feel like I'm revealing the number one reason why just about any brass player can't go higher. It's they don't have the muscle power and the contraction and the tension to keep the aperture at the smallest and the most narrow as they go higher. What happens? You don't have the contraction, the strength, your lips will slightly part. And when they slightly part, it might not be noticeable to you, but that is what's going on. And when the lips can't quite contain that air and the aperture just widens just a, a millimeter or just a fraction, your range is either um, stymied or goes down. That's just the fact. Dim the facts, folks. So if you found this video of value, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, uh, I just want to let you know I do have uh, one or two videos on my channel that you may want to check out. I'm getting up to maybe 10. So, you know, you got 10 videos you can go through. So do subscribe. Hit that little bell thing because that's a notification when I put up new videos that you might be interested in. If you want to peruse through my website, it's trumpetsizzle.com. Trumpetsizzle.com. I have a lot of new things coming out practice aids. I've got some different versions of my brand new 2019 16-week updated upper register course for all brass instruments. You might want to check out my site, trumpetsizzle.com. I'm Kurt Thompson, and again, um, I hope that you and I interacted through this video and you got my message about what is the number one reason you're having problems going upstairs. I'll see you in the next one.
the Andre Baroque, folks. I've developed it. You're going to benefit from it. Happy New Year! Almost! By the way, that was Kurt Thompson moi, on the new Sizzle Jazz Flugelhorn. It's a gorgeous, beautiful horn inside and out. And um, I've already kind of done it. Let me get out of the way because this camera's kind of funky. If I'm in the frame, it doesn't like to do close ups. Hopefully, you can. See the sizzle jazz on the horn? That is the brand of this flugel. It's a beautiful horn. Beautiful, smooth, smooth valves. Hey, it's Kurt Thompson. And I wanted to give you three tips, maybe a bonus or two as well, to start the new year right. Or if you're watching this and it's in the middle of the year, Maybe you're trying to start a new chapter in your life or turn over a new leaf and just begin anew, begin fresh. And um, this is a couple of things that you could try. So number one, don't be intimidated. There is a psychology to playing just about any brass instrument, especially when it comes to trumpet. What makes trumpet different? Because you are going to be heard, ladies and gentlemen. You are going to be heard. I played all the brass instruments in various organizations, and when I screwed up on trombone or when I screwed up on tuba, um, no, not too many people cringed. Uh, you screw up on trumpet, above the staff, especially at the end of the song, everybody will hear it, everybody in the audience will hear it, and in people outside, it's, it's a whole different ball game. So there is a psychology to playing the brass instruments, especially when you are almost out there naked and you're playing trumpet. I mean, there's just, there's a psychology to it. And so here's my first tip. You have to break through the psychological barrier. And the, the number one barrier I see for people wanting to improve their range and endurance is they don't ever try to test their limits with their range. That doesn't even seem logical, right? Someone that wants to get better, someone that wants to play higher, play with more power, play with better endurance. Um, yet it's like one of the number one things um, when I ask, hey, when's the last time that you tried to go for a double C? Or if it's a pro player, when's the last time that you really crunched down and tried to get that double E, that triple F sharp, that triple G? When was the last time? A lot of times either it's uh, a nada or it's a no-go or they're scratching their head like, well, I think I did something last month. If you are in Tent and serious and motivated, you should know the answer to that right away. You should say, I did that today. Kurt, I just did that yesterday. Kurt, I just did that two days ago. You know exactly when you did that. Not, well, hmm, I believe sometime, maybe last month, I went for a high seat. No. 
So the reason people don't do that, they don't push their limits, is psychological. It's kind of intimidating to go up into the sky and maybe you've had bad experience before and you just don't like what happens. So your number one tip right now is to break past your psychological barrier. If you're watching this before you practice, get out your horn. And of course it's flugel for me, but uh, you know, usually I'm on my trumpet. So go ahead and get out whatever instrument that it is. It could even be tuba. It could be euphonium. And go ahead and then I want you to go ahead and play to your limit and push your limit beyond. So if you're on euphonium and you can always get up to E flat on F, but after that it gets really, really intimidating and you don't try to push it, I want you to go for the G, euphonium players. I want you to go for the A, okay? Trumpet players, if you get above the staff and you're good with high C and D and E flat and E, but doggone it, you don't want to go for that F because you know what happens. There's some pain involved. It doesn't sound good. Maybe it doesn't come out. Or maybe you don't want to go for the F sharp. Or maybe you don't want to go for that double G. Or whatever the case is. I mean, you could be higher or lower. You have to push yourself beyond your limits. And I would recommend at least once a week. Now, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're a, you know, a sixth grader or if you're a 60 year old professional trumpet player, bone player, or whatever at least once a week, get a little tough and say, okay, today's the day. I haven't tried to get, let's just say, I haven't tried to get a turbo players. I haven't tried to get that way on up above where um, uh, Tommy Dorsey got and um, I'm getting sentimental over you. You know the one I'm talking about, way on up there. Let today be the day. You're in your own practice room. No one's watching you. Break that psychological barrier and try it, okay? Work your way up and just try to push yourself beyond that limit. That is tip number one. Everybody can do that. I promise you, if you, you have 52 weeks coming up in 2020, that's 52 times for the year of 2020, you could try to push beyond your limits. What do you think is gonna happen after pushing beyond your limits 52 times? My guess is you're going to improve. My guess is that the limit that you push through will be the old limits because you'll be comfortable in that particular range. It's gonna be an overall winner. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, articulation. Articulation. Try adding in five or 10 minutes, at least every other day, of some extra articulation. Quarter note equals 120. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, that's about 120, right? So, if you can't do that, put down where you're at. Are you at 116? Are you at 108? Are you at 92? Or if you're a a whiz at classical music and maybe even an advanced or pro player, maybe you're way beyond 120, maybe you can single tongue at 132 or 138, write that down and try to best yourself every other day on single tongue. Add in K tongue, double tongue, reverse double tongue. Now you guys know what that is, right? Add in kata kata kata. Kata 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 right? Kata 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 Add in that. How about your triple tongues? Ta ta ka ta ta ka ta, ta ka ta ta ka ta ta. How about ka ta ta ka ta ta ka ta ta ka ta ta? That's like your reverse triple tongue. Add in articulation. My point is, add in articulation. The worst offenders happen to be the professional jazz trumpet players. I've known a lot of you through my lifetime. Maybe even Sam Noto, a guy I played with a long, long time ago at the Royal York the Royal York Hotel in Toronto. Maybe he might even agree to this, that the professional jazz trumpet player is lacking sometimes when it comes to articulation. I mean, really buckling down and working on your articulation. Why would that be? Well, come on, enjoy spring. Um, Brownie speaks. 
and then all the other jazz standards, you know, all the things you are, and on and on and on, Green Dolphin Street, you're not really doing lots of triple tongue and double tongue, you know, in those type of songs for the jazz trumpeter. I'm here to tell you, jazz trumpeters and everybody else, if you would just add in some articulation at least five or ten minutes every other day, by the end of 2020 or whatever year you're watching this video, give yourself a year, you're going to be overjoyed as to what happens with your playing. You're just going to have more command of your instrument. I believe you're going to have an improved sound, a more crystal clear pinpointed attack. And who knows, you might even increase your upper register just a little bit. At the very least, you're going to have just a lot more colors and a lot more pops when you go to play your instrument, especially you pro jazz players. You're going to be able to put a little bit more pops and a little bit more sizzle on those different notes that you want to get. So that's my tip number two. Add in five to ten minutes of articulation in addition to what you already do um, every other day, at least five or ten minutes every other day. Now for you classical only players, um, maybe you, you can dilute that down because you maybe you already spend an hour on what I'm just talking about now and I'm not telling people to spend an hour on it but if, if you're a classical person and that's all you do then um, you maybe you have to substitute something else. Maybe for you you have to um, add in five or ten minutes of lip trills for example or five or ten minutes of some other part of the instrument that you um, tend to put on the back burner. Tip number three, at least once a week, turn one of your practice days into piano. Or pianissimo for everything. You're not gonna be doing a concert. You're not gonna be going to a jam. You want this day to be a day where you don't have any other distractions and you can just play your normal stuff, whether you practice an hour a day or three hours a day, turn everything into piano or pianissimo. That means when you're doing your range study and you're supposed to be powering out, because it's going to be your pianissimo day. Now, too bad you couldn't be in the room with me because that was probably two Ps, maybe almost three Ps for a high concert B flat, a high C. So make one day per week that's going to give you 52 times between now and the end of 2020, or whatever year you're watching this, 52 times of really helping this, helping your chops vibrate better, better flexibility, and getting that response coming in. You need that. We brass players need that response to happen. I promise you, I promise you, if you do this 52 times, over the next year, you are gonna to wanna to come shake my hand. Thank you, Kurt, wow, thank you. And you can do it and you're not adding any extra time to your practice regimen, right? You are taking what you normally would already do. You're already gonna practice this particular set, for example, on a Saturday. Maybe you're practicing two hours on a Saturday and you don't have anything else going on. So I'm not asking you to add anything, you already are practicing. I'm saying I want you to turn down the volume, turn it all the way down to, Okay, and then the next day you can turn it back up to normal how you would normally practice. So there you have three tips. What are they? They are all things that you can do and you don't need to buy anything. You don't need to find another teacher for this. And it's just easy. What was the first one? Do you remember? It's about this, about the brain. Don't be intimidated by your instrument. Trombone players, I'm getting sentimental over you. Don't be scared to get up to that super duper way, way above the staff. Don't be scared. I know you probably can't play that note, but I want you to have the psychological mindset to work your way up there. 
at least break through those barriers. Don't be intimidated by those notes. Same goes for all other brass instruments. What was tip number two? Articulation. Add in five or ten minutes of articulation at least every other day. At least every other day. I promise you by the end of the year you are going to thank me. You're going to be a much better player. You're going to feel better. Probably will have increased your range a little bit. You're just going to be an overall better player. Especially the people who tend to really need this. The pro jazz trumpet player. Pro jazz trumpet players might need it, but they tend to do a lot of articulation with their doodle tongue. Pro trombone players tend to have a lot more action going on with their articulation than your typical pro jazz trumpet players. So you guys need to add in this tip number two, your articulation, five to 10 minutes. Get out the old Arbitz book, or if you don't have a book, you could just uh, work on scales, right? Extra five or ten minutes of that every day. What was that third tip? I said to turn down the volume. Down the piano, beyond the piano, penis mode, play softly. Play softly. I'm trying to be exaggerated here, but I want you to play softly one day per week. You don't have to change anything about your practice except for this turn down the volume. Play everything normal, whether you do jazz standards or whether you're working on orchestral excerpts, uh, band music, whatever the case is, your scales and your warm up and your long tones and sight reading and on and on and on. But I want you to turn down the volume all the way down to P or pianissimo, two P's. Maybe you can get it down to pianissimo. That's triple pianissimo for you guys who don't understand my version of Italian. You start your year with those three tips. I'm just going to guarantee and bet you are going to be a better brass musician. And I don't care if I'm looking at somebody who's 60 years old and has been a pro player for 40 years, or if I'm looking at somebody who's 15 years old and still just trying to figure out their instrument, the three tips that I told you right now are going to help you out. Take it from me, Kurt Thompson, guaranteed. Now how about a bonus tip? All right. This is a little bit of personal information about me, but you might be wondering why I'm dressed like this. Well, I just got back from doing a wedding reception. And yeah, you're thinking, wow, wedding reception at the end of December, why? Don't ask me why, I don't know. People like to get married at all kinds of interesting times. I guess, I guess now is not a bad time to get married because if you think about it, um, going forward for your anniversaries, a lot of times you'll have off um, for your job, whatever, or school. I mean, you're gonna have off or kind of around this time, the holidays. And then if you're married, you could celebrate your anniversary kind of more easy, right? So I guess it's not a bad time. Now I could still be at that wedding reception right now, drinking, getting my drunk on and um, a bunch of other stuff, but I'm not. What am I doing? I'm having a little bit of this. I don't know if you can see in there without me spilling it. Can you see? Yeah. A little bit of coffee and what am I having here? Protein shake. Ah, seems a little bit, little bit cliche, doesn't it? Well, it was just um, several years ago that I wouldn't be home right now. I'd still either be at the gig or at the reception or if that didn't last long, out to a bar, or out to somebody's house, somewhere to continue drinking. And if not, if there was no gig, I probably would have a steel reserve 
something hardcore. Um, Hurricane, steel reserve in this hand, a big 40. And I wouldn't have a protein shake or coffee. I'd uh, be waiting for the Domino's guy to deliver a pizza. And so uh, I had developed some pretty bad habits. Being a professional musician, a full-time pro professional musician, now this is a topic for another conversation, but let's just make it clear. Being a full-time professional musician does not mean you work at Best Buy during the day and then you play a jam or something at night. It doesn't mean that you sit at home and mess around while your wife is a realtor bringing in the money or your wife is a teacher or an insurance agent. That is not a full, you have no skin in the game because you got it on Easy Street. I'm talking about you full-time musicians where everything depends on you playing this instrument or another one close to it and you don't play this, you don't eat. Okay, there's no easy street. You, ha you haven't gotten married or you haven't have a, the luxury of a girlfriend that's a realtor, you know? And she's out actually making, or could be he if you're a female player, but I'm just gonna use he's for right now. Um, you're a he and she's out there selling houses and you're on easy street. That's not what I'm talking about. When you are a full-time musician, you get as many gigs as you can. Come hell or high water, they could be good ones, they could be bad ones. The number one thing that happens, I will tell you, if you're a real pro player, and also I'm not talking about university and college trumpet instructors and brass instructors, you are not a full-time pro player. You're a teacher who happens to maybe play a couple of gigs. You have somebody holding your hand with that paycheck. That doesn't count. I'm talking about a real pro player that doesn't play, doesn't eat. There's a huge difference in that world. And what happens when, when you are a pro player, you tend to want to get all your compensation. What is your compensation? It's going to be usually cash or a check at the gig. It's going to be a dinner voucher or some kind of free food. And it's going to be almost always alcohol and drink, um, drink tokens that you're going to get or accommodate or a voucher or something like that. As a result, you can find yourself, if you've been a pro musician like I have a very long time, you can find yourself really having to develop some bad habits, uh, being on lots of gigs where you get your cash, you get your money, you get your free dinner or lunch or whatever it is, but, but damn it, you're gonna take advantage of uh, that alcohol because it's part of your compensation. Uh, you're going to drink those four or five beers or those four or five or six shots. They might even give you more. A lot of times they give the band more or that bottle of champagne. So uh, it can be a pretty overwhelming and insidious uh, bad, habit, bad habit that develops as the result of being a full-time pro player that isn't able to depend on anybody else for their income. When you're on the bandstand and you're in between sets, it's not likely you're going to be offered a protein shake. Yeah, maybe you can get coffee, but uh, most most players that I've played with aren't going to grab a cup of coffee at midnight on that 10, 10 or 15 minute break in the set. They're going to get a beer or wine or something like that. And you're not going to get a protein shake. You're going to get some kind of chicken wings, fried mushrooms, fried cheese sticks or something like that. So it's insidious. If you're a full-time pro player, you're going to have developed these bad habits and sometimes it's like just like an 800 pounder gorilla that's tough to get off your back. A couple of years back I made these changes. Uh, it was very tough and now I'm home early. I can still be out partying up and going crazy but I'm home early and I'm having a protein shake which I'm getting ready to indulge in right when I shut this camera off and I got a little bit of coffee left. So that's kind of like my bonus tip for you guys. I feel like my um, playing has improved over the last couple of years just by doing that. But I've even gotten my health a little bit better. My health is a little bit better. Blood pressure is down, stronger, slimmer. All by getting rid of some of those old bad habits that developed um, being a pro musician for so long. The kind of pro musician I just gave a definition to. You don't have a day job. You don't have a teaching gig during the day and you don't have a wife or a husband who's an insurance or realtor bringing home the bacon so you can just do whatever. You have to get out there and play. That's how I defined a 100% full-time pro musician. Anyway, that was my bonus tip.
Well, I'm going to be taking a detour off my normal status quo of playing and making videos and stuff. And I'm going to, I'm going to really be getting into jazz trumpet and I'll tell you more about that soon. So Happy New Year 2020. Kurt Thompson. Take a visit to my site, trumpetsizzle.com. You could hit the like button, you could leave a comment below, and you could subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Now, Kurt, you can do better than that. Hit it one more time, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Now I'm happy. How to turn any trumpet mouthpiece into a screamer. You'd like to know that, wouldn't you? Well, a couple of key points. In order to do this, you have to have uneven or lopsided asymmetric lips. That means one lip is a little bit larger, a little bit thicker, a little bit wider than the other. So if you look at my lips, let me get into the camera a little bit closer. Did you notice that the bottom lip is substantially larger, not just a little bit. It is 